good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to an iRacing.com special event here. A special presentation of RaceBot TV on iRacing Live, where today we honour the life, the legacy, and the accomplishment of British driver Justin Wilson, who, of course, unfortunately lost his life just a couple of weeks ago during the Verizon IndyCar Series race at Pocono Raceway. Now here today, we are going to do 150 miles around Texas Motor Speedway, the track where Justin Wilson won his final race in series competition in 2012. We're going to do two splits here for you today. Uh, we'll be leading coverage on split number one with Sean Cole from the Sit Pit. Sim Pit. And then we've got Sam Compton, Rachel Whiteford. They'll be covering another event along with Hugo Louise. Rachel, I'm going to come to you first. And... It was a shock when we lost Justin Wilson, and we've done the period of mourning. Of course, he was buried just a couple of days ago, um, just north of Milton Keynes in a place called Paulsbury. And it's an incredibly sad time for IndyCar, for fans, for British racing once again. But here today, we let the racing do the talking. We let the drivers of iRacing do the talking. Yeah, good afternoon, Will. It's a very somber occasion we're here for, but we are... We're going to be here, of course, to celebrate Justin Wilson. We can mourn him, but we can also celebrate what he's done for racing, what he's done for IndyCar. And as a huge IndyCar fan myself, it was a tragic, tragic incident, a very dark time as a real fan of the sport. And it was something that really, really hurt me. I really felt quite strongly about the whole thing, and it was a very dark time for the, for the series. But like I said, we have to, at the same time, come forwards and celebrate the man. Celebrate a true gentle giant, a man that was an incredible talent in motor racing. And let's not forget Watkins Glen, he won in one of the Dale Coin cars, mm -hmm. which is an incredible achievement. The man was a legend. He didn't get the, the chance he deserved. And we're here to bring memory to his final race win. Yeah, ironically, he was the second driver who was due to run, an, um, run a car for the Andretti team full time and unfortunately lost his life before he had the opportunity to do so. Um, Dan Weldon, who of course was credited with creating the safer Indy car, um, the DW12, which bears his moniker, um, he was due to drive for Andretti in 2012, was not able to do so. Um, I'm joined here also by Sean Cole from the Sim Pit and Sean... It's an interesting one because it's a difficult one. I mean, it's, we have to go back racing. And of all the tracks that we can do that, we're using Texas Motor Speedway. This is a fast racetrack. It's a track which has had its fair share of controversies but over time. But ironically, it was a track that never was a pack racetrack. And it's a track that in 2012, it was incredibly difficult. And drivers had to really wheel that car around. That's what these drivers are going to have to do here today. Yeah, absolutely. Te Texas is a very, very, very fast track, and if you remember years ago, there was actually a, an issue with G-forces and drivers even getting to the point of blacking out. It is a, uh, it can be a dangerous track because of those speeds as well. That's for sure, and that's going to make for an exciting race here today. Yeah, and that was a 2001 race at Texas Motor Speedway, of course. That was part of the cart lineage which Justin Wilson raced in um, as a teammate for Sebastian Bourdais for a number of years. Now, if you would like to donate some money um, to the family of Justin Wilson during this difficult time, you can do so by going to justinwilson.co.uk forward slash donate. That's justinwilson.co.uk forward slash donate. And there are hundreds of iRacers literally about to take part in this 100 lap event here at Texas Motor Speedway. It's the Justin Wilson 150. Um, so Sam Compton and Rachel Whiteford are going to head off. They're going to commentate on a split. Sean and I will do the same. We'll be back in a couple of moments time. You're watching a special presentation of RaceBot TV on iRacing Live.
has officially begun. Outside contact made 56 slides in it and four. Who's oh, gonna be in this strife? Did even give it to Ryan Truex? Truex is your winner over Tandy. Well, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to an iRacing.com special event honoring the life, the legacy, and the accomplishments of Justin Wilson. This is the Justin Wilson 150, a special presentation of Racebot TV on iRacing Live. Well, Vincent, along with Sean Cole, and also joined for the early stages of this race by Cameron Walsh as well. We'll be with you all afternoon here on Racebot TV for this 100 lap event. As well, drivers have got themselves about eight minutes left of practice. Got to get themselves a shakedown before they head themselves to the starting grid for this afternoon's event. And Sean, we're going to talk this afternoon about good, hard, fast quality racing. And that starts with these drivers having to adjust to dynamic track surfaces this is the first time that we're going to see this on an i racing live race what tv event with indy cars yeah that should add to the excitement of today's race that's for sure i mean the not a lot of drivers have had adequate time to really test this new change to the sim and and this is a pretty significant change because it's going to affect them on their long runs more than the short runs obviously and that made it even harder for them to do some pre-race testing. So it'll be interesting to see how that plays out throughout the day and what drivers adjust well to the changes in track conditions. Long runs, short runs, it will be interesting. This track historically can have a green feel to it. It is not a pack-like track cam compared to some place like Chicagoland Speedway, Las Vegas Speedway. You've got to wheel the car around this racetrack, especially through the tri-oval. 
because of the fact that it can get very narrow there, almost single groove at points, and these drivers, if they are going to run too wide, simple game, hold your line. Oh, Absolutely, and coming off that turn four, the car can even get a little bit snappy, so you'll see some drivers who everything looks good, but all of a sudden it'll start to get a little crazy for them, and any car in the vicinity is going to have to keep their heads up for that as well. So, we'll have a look in just one moment. In fact, we'll have a look now at your starting grid for this afternoon's event. As you can see, on pole position, it will be Jake Wright with a qualifying time of 23.529. Brandon Trainer will line up alongside him on that front row of the grid for Broken Arrow. Just literally one tenth of a second back. Then Brandon Trost in third. Miguel Angel Martinez in fourth. Some very well known IndyCar drivers at the front of this field. Ryan Norton, he's another one. He starts in P number five. Alongside him, a former Iris.com Indianapolis 500 champion in Nigel Marnie. Chad Simpson. Christopher DeMerit, Lyle up in the fourth row of the grid. Then row number five will be Connor Cross and Jonathan Goak. Ray Alfala, former iRacing.com NASCAR Peak Antifreeze Series champion. He rolls off in P number 11. Then Blake Reynolds, he is in 12. Casey Tucker in 13. Richard Towler in P14, a former world championship winner. In fact, Towler is the only driver to have won a race in both the Iris.com World Championship Grand Prix Series and the NASCAR Peak Anti-Free Series powered by Iris.com. The ever popular Chris Overland, he's in P15, then Manuel Sanchez in P number 16. We cycle that grid back on through for you. Austin Espati, Dylan Jones, Daniel Roper, James Crawford, Philip Krause, Kevin O'Keefe, Jacob Norpstan, PJ Sturgios, Kevin Pomia, Tim Holgate, Michael Doyle, Brandon Cohen, and Tyler Shifford ran out your field. Mr. Cameron Walsh. When these drivers go down to the grid, they always know it's time to go. But this race, you have to start off with just a little bit of patience. No, oh, it's not even just the patience. It's uh, just a managing of the communication between your drivers. Uh, you just, you got to almost be telepathic here in the start when everyone's just getting used to their tires, used to each other's setups. Because, uh, as we all know, these cars can be set up uh, quite a myriad of different ways. And I'm sure that while the uh, setups are similar here at Texas, there's really kind of only one setup that uh, does well here at the track. I do have to say, um, it it's just going to have to take that almost telepathic communication between these drivers. Or else we're going to have a couple of uh, early race incidents. And, of course, you'd hate to see something like that uh, kick off an event like this. Yeah, we've got those drivers lining up on the starting grid getting ready then for this afternoon's event on Racebot TV. Our aerial coverage here today will be brought to you by And One Design. They are the official graphics partner of Racebot TV. And our onboard coverage, well, that's brought to you by the iRacing Forum app for Android. Cars lining up then. They are rolling off behind the iRacing.com first safety car. We'll talk about that one over the course of this event. It's got itself a nice little... New paint job for this season. As you can see, a couple of the drivers there as we get things sorted out. There you can see front of your field, that number 23 machine. Well, we said at the top of the broadcast, we're going to let the racing do the talking here today. That is the important thing. It's what Badass Wilson would have wanted it himself. And that is why we're going to go racing. We're going to have ourselves an incredible 100 lap event. And it's all going to be here for you on Racebot TV and on iRacing Live. So thank you so much for joining us all afternoon here as we've got these drivers now working themselves through turn number three and four. Just getting ready to let it rip itself loose here. Good old Texas style. Texas motor speed where the 1.5 mile trioval is about to get things underway. Jake Wright on the inside of the front row of the grid. Brandon Traino alongside him in the stake and shake car. Here we are, pace car is in for Justin Wilson, 150. We'll start right now. Good early jump there. You can see your drivers too wide as they try and work themselves down in towards turn number one for the first time. Everyone is through for the first corner. Will they make it all onto the back straight away? The answer is going to be yes, they are. So good early start. A little bit too wide racing. For the race lead, trade on the high side, Jake right on the low side as they complete lap number one of 100. Mighty close out front already here, Sean. 
Incredible start, incredible racing right out of the gates. Things are looking good here at Texas. Oh, I said to themselves down the back trailway again there. You can see Brandon Traino looking on board of him. Traino almost getting clipped there. We're actually three wide in towards turn number three. That is going to be Brandon Trost. He will lead the field. It'll be our second different leader today. So Brandon Trost in the number eight car will move himself to the top of the field as they work themselves down into one and two once again. Still side by side between Wright and Traino. Now, Cameron Walsh. We always see a lot of these drivers um, in things like 16 Street Racing League competition, in ISOWC competition, and of course in the granddaddy of them all, the Irish.com Indianapolis 500. It's the first time we often see them though on a track like Texas. Not many of the big leads run this track anymore. So it's a different type of racing compared to what we're sometimes used to. Yes, we don't normally see a lot of high banked racing. You've got the double tri oval, those, that tri oval almost uh, <laughs> cuts you off almost. You gotta cut the grass almost to get it across uh, the front wing. As you can see, Trost has to dip way down on that entry to tri oval. In the second stage of that tri oval, his wheels are almost touching the grass. And then you go onto this extraordinarily high banking. You hear the engines bog down as uh, Trost is running an extremely low line right now. But I have to say right now, going back through the field, uh, you can see quite a few cars there. They're still running too wide. And actually, we've had contact in the back of the uh, exiting turn number four, Will. Yeah, we've got a uh, driver on the wall. That is Casey Tucker there. Unfortunately, Tucker's the race looks as though that is done. We've also got Richard Towler involved. There you can see Towler in the number nine car. He looks as though he is going to be out of the race. So our first caution here at the conclusion of lap number five. Get ourselves another look at this one. On board with Richard Towler. This is working himself down in towards turn number three and four. Just a driver crossing up there in the Haverline car. Richard Towler involved in that one. Well, I see at least three drivers involved in that one. We work ourselves behind the Irish.com pace car for the first time here today, Sean. Yeah, that was a really unfortunate moment. But again, you can see in the back of the grid, you had some cars running two and even three wide. But uh, yeah, it looked like Casey just came up a little bit and that allowed him to get rear-ended and that just kind of caused a little uh, havoc and it looked like four cars got caught up in that wreck. Indeed so. So, ladies and gentlemen, whilst we have the quick opportunity, we're going to step aside for just one moment. We will be back after this. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. A couple of people came onto pit road there. Chad Simpson, Christopher DeMarit, Daniel Roper, Chris Overland, Tim Holgate, Austin Espetit, and a couple of others. Lights are still on on top of the iRacing.com first safety car, which has gotten itself just a little bit of a makeover for this season, Sean. He might just have lost Sean there. No, he's there. Hi, Sean. Oh, sorry about that. I was going through the grid. I was just uh, on another thought thinking about Brandon Trost up front. What was the question there? I'm sorry oh, about that. I was just that. talking about the, the Irish.com first safety car. Got a nice little gold paint scheme for this year as Irish does its own bit for charity. Yeah, you got to like that. A little special paint scheme, which a lot of these guys actually are running special paint schemes for this event. Yeah, as you can see, just heading themselves down the back straight away. We should probably end up going back green this time by keeping an eye out on that one 
Um, so we'll go back to green next time. Bye. Um, Cam, those drivers that pitted, all they were really trying to do was just get themselves a top off on fuel in case they need it later on. Well, of course, you, you never know how a race like this will go at Texas. I mean, it's as we've already seen, uh, there's going to be a lot of uh, a very close quarter driving here, especially through this trioval section. So we did see some too wide running, but it was very quick to get to a single line up in the front. I, uh, I expect uh, hopefully uh, this will go green in a little bit. It looked like uh, that in incident was just uh, caused by somebody kind of rolling the suspension up in the corner. They saved the car, but ultimately put it in a bad spot, which caused that wreck. So everyone's trying to stay clean. Uh, hopefully we'll have a, a clean enough run. And if that is what happens, um, then uh, uh, those guys who have topped off on a little bit of fuel have a little bit more of a strategic advantage is when they can come in for a green flag pit stop. Indeed. And here an update on that safety car. It's go cold, go gold for kids with cancer. That's the American Childhood Cancer Association that you can see on top of the iRacing.com first safety car for the next 12 weeks. Well, Brandon Trost leads the way. Jake Wright in second, Brandon Trainer in third, Ryan Norton in fourth, and Jonathan Goke in P number five. So, Going to go back to green flag racing. One caution so far today. Lap number nine of 100 will be in the books. Got Casey Tucker, Richard Towler, and Jacob Notstead out of the event. Pace car in. Here we go. Back to green flag racing at Texas Motor Speedway. It's a good jump there by Trost. They come back to green. Traino versus Wright. Looks as like though that's going to be immediately on a side by side as well. Jonathan Goak there of Ray Norton as the car has stormed down into that first corner. It looks as though that Jonathan Goak actually is going to work himself past that number 15 machine of Ryan Norton. So, Goak is up one place behind. You've got Nigel Marnie, former Indy 500 champion, battling out of Connor Cross too wide in towards turn number three and four once again, Sean. Yeah, looking good. One thing we didn't talk about much is the arrow push these cars pick up. And you'll see some of the, t sometimes these guys are just trying to get into some clean air because they can carry a lot more speed through the corners. Yep, down the back straight away they come. We're going to ride ourselves along board with the driver of Jonathan Goke there in that Pepsi Max car. Just left hand side of him, you've got the broken arrow SpaceX car of Ryan Norton. These two, uh, oh, they've been involved in a couple of battles over the years uh, as they work themselves into that first corner. Once again, number 10 Pepsi car holding on strong. But Brandon Trost has just got himself a little bit of a gap because Brandon Traino, Jake Wright going side by side. And Brandon Traino moves himself now up into P number two, Cam. Yes, he is. Uh, Jake moving up into position number two. I'm noticing, a, a speci uh, uh, noticing how the track is developing here. I know it's too early for really the rubber that these guys are laying down, which is in since we've got the new surface material, if you're just joining us. These guys are running on a surface that will be collecting uh, rubber as uh, realistically as it can and trekking marbles. So uh, I'm noticing that uh, this really uh, in the uh, through these high bank turns, there are people who are able to hold the outside line and get enough of a run to sort of challenge through the trioval and try and take that position going into one. But uh, turn one is just such a difficult corner, especially when it's being in that shade there. So Jonathan Goke is still working that outside line on Ryan Norton. Uh, Jonathan Goke, who had started in 10th position, is actually challenging for fourth, which is a good start for him as well. But uh, I'm also looking back at Tim Holgate. He started in 26th position. He's already up to 12th, and he's already looking to go. Uh, maybe on the outside of the car of Connor Cross, but he'll think better of it. But uh, right now, both lines seems to be working very well here in Texas. Well, yeah, the outside line working well. The inside line is working well. Brandon Trost starting to get some pressure from Brandon Trainer. It's a battle of the two Brandons out from on board then with the stake and shake car of Brandon Trainer as they come down in towards turn number one once again. Trainer is looking strong. Um, in fact, both the Brandons are looking very strong in this race, and that's a pick-off from the last time we saw it on Racebot TV back in May, Sean. Well, you know, it's funny you say that, but both of these Brandons are regulars of the IndyCar series, and it's, uh, it's not a new thing to see the Brandons going at it. Indeed, no, it isn't. Of course, they run pretty much every week in the iRacing.com IndyCar series. You can see two wide too deep as they head themselves through turn number one and two. Jake Wright's actually falling down. He's now outside your top five. He's been passed by both Ryan Norton and Jonathan Goku down to the inside of Wright. So we can see caution out on the racetrack. Second caution of the day and it is Kevin O'Keefe. Oh, it's one of the drivers who 
I'll tell you what, it'll probably have a very good onboard stream, but that car is toast there. So the number 21 machine is out of the race. Ah. Replay coming up, Cam. Yes, I am. I'm actually looking at it. This is a little bit more developed than that. Uh, it actually looks like he just got caught up in a slight chain reaction here. I'm having to take a look. It's actually, uh, there's Dylan C. Jones, car number 11. Uh, looks like he was just uh, taking uh, entry to turn number one. Looks like that front end just got a little loose. He ended up collecting a couple of cars. Uh, so just that little bit of front arrow looseless uh, collected Michael Duell and James E. Crawford. And then uh, ultimately, there uh, those try as he might, Kevin O'Keefe couldn't avoid it. Yeah, there you can see that. Just getting a look from the Racebot TV Super Slow Mo replay. Kevin O'Keefe. Um, it's one of a number of drivers, say James Crawford, also there in the mix. So I think a couple of these drivers will be looking to get themselves some repairs once the pit window opens this next time by. Well, two early cautions. We did expect there potentially to be some early cautions in this event. We've got a bit of a road. In fact, we've got cars on pit road. We've got pretty much everyone on pit road. Here comes Trost, Traino, Norton, Goak, and others. They're all bringing their cars on towards pit road for their first pit stop of the day we're about halfway into a fuel stint it would have been halfway in about six seven lap time sean so no one wanting to take it too risky inside of your top 10 let's look for more aerial coverage as these drivers come in no you know with the new tires and the uh, and the track not the new tires but the changing track it's probably a good opportunity to get tires i mean i don't think these guys want to push things too far if they don't have to especially when you have a hunch everybody will hit be heading for pit lane so lap 19 is a good time to come in for these guys yeah as uh, so we've got one driver who stayed out austin espati uh, the driver <laughs> who stayed out there 24.816 last lap and we've got brandon trost um who wins out from brandon traino then ryan norton then jonathan goat then right marnie alfala and holgate this is going to be a very interesting one to see actually Ray Alfala and Tim Holgate, um, why don't we go back to Green Flag Racing. Both of them participated in last season's 16th Street Racing League. Um, sorry, none of them participated, I say that back. Ray Alfala, of course, a regular in the NASCAR Peak anti free Series. Tim Holgate is your 16th Street Series champion. Um, of course, so, um, Cam, Ray Alfala, he has run, run in two Irish.com Indianapolis 500s now. He got a podium the first time out. Had a pretty good run as well in 2015. So our father, even though he's a nice car driver, he knows how to wheel one of these Indy cars around. All that he does. And uh, it, just even getting uh, any experience that you can in any uh, high strength of field, high quality racing series or racing uh, event like we have here uh, to cut some... Uh, Cut some razor and get some experience on these tires, or at least get some experience with how the tracks develop. But never a bad thing. I do have to laugh at Austin Espati. I, I was uh, just looking behind the pace car. I didn't see anybody there, and then there was this poor little red vehicle. And uh, in the chat there, he just uh, typed "Welp, R.I.P." <laughs> and uh, he is probably going to be getting absolutely swallowed up by uh, Brandon Trost and Brandon Trano on the new tires. I do not think he was expecting uh, as many people to pit as uh, they did. But uh, right now, Austin Espati is um, going to be kind of in a little bit of a uh, worrying position when uh, the pace car does pull off. But the lights are still on, so we do uh, at least have uh, plus one to go. Indeed. Ladies and gentlemen, of course, we're doing this here today on Racebot TV as a service to the entire iRacing.com community. Um, of course, we're also doing it to honor the life, the memory, and the legacy of Justin Wilson. Now, we're not going to do this as a charity run. We're not going to shout at you every five minutes, but if you have got a couple of pounds, a couple of dollars, a couple of euros spare, then please go to Justin Wilson, that's all one word, dot co dot uk forward slash donate, where you can help out Justin Wilson's family, his wife and his kids during this incredibly difficult time for them and one can only imagine the pain and the suffering that his family have had to go through over the last about three weeks or so now we're getting ourselves ready for a restart this time by austin espati is the only driver who didn't pit in your top 20. um it's gonna be interesting i'll tell you that one when we get back for this restart and brandon troist Ryan Norton, Jonathan Goak are right there behind. Now, it's going to be a case of the aggression factor here. Um, we've got Brandon Trainer there as well. This could be interesting, actually. I think Brandon Trainer is having a couple of technical issues. Indeed, there he is. So they might actually, this might cause an issue 
No, it won't. I think we've got ourselves sorted out there. Pace car going to come on towards pit road this moment. That's going to put the field in the command of Austin SPT. Second caution of the day in the books. Green flag back in the air. We go racing once again. Down in towards turn and one. SPT comes. Then it's Trost. Then it's Trainer. Then it's Norton. John go right there behind. Too wide already as they work themselves down the back straight away. And already Trost is looking to the high side to try and get that pass made over Austin SPT. The issue will be, Sean, if you're the driver of SPT, you want to hold that low sign. If you go high on these old tires, well, you're literally just going to be a sitting duck. Yeah, I think either way, he's going to end up being a sitting duck. And what's going to end up being a big story is as he goes back through the grid, if this stays green, how much will that spread out the field as each car has to work their way around? Three wide as they come down in towards, just like Hacken and Schumacher at Spa 2000. That is Brandon Traino going to the race lead there over Brandon Trost. That was a textbook three-way pass in towards turn number three, Cam. It was, uh, it looked like Trust wanted to stick that nose cone down to the inside going into one, but also it's not just this high-quality pack of three cars that we have up here. Uh, looking behind, though, you've got Ryan Norton, Ray Alfala, Tim Holgate, Jonathan Gove, and uh, Nigel Marnif, all very, very well-known names in the IndyCar uh, community. They are absolutely cutting razor behind uh, these three front cars. Uh, they've gone three wide a couple of times here, and there they go into one once again. Uh, so already this fighting here has been uh, quite the separating factor as it uh, looks like Tim Holgate has a little bit of a, an issue on the inside corner. So I don't believe... Uh, actually, you know what? They've caught right up, so ignore what I say, but it looks like they're going to be catching up to Austin Espity in these next couple of laps as the tires warm up, and we'll have to see them all trying to get around the uh, old tires of Austin Espity's IndyCar. Brandon Trainer just losing the lead there to Brandon Trois. Trois goes back to the point. He's led 19 laps here in this afternoon's event as they're going to go one, they're going to go two, they're going to go three wide in towards turn number three again. That's Goke on the inside. Norton on the almost making contact there on the exit of turn number four. I say there's no loft loss between Goke and Norton, but that was... Um, Pretty respectful driving there, just coming up the racetrack a little bit was Goke, but the two giving each other room in the early stages of this event, Sean. Yeah, that was very, very, very close, tight racing. And, you know, one thing you gotta keep in mind about the Indy cars, the harder you race, the slower you go, and that's why you saw that back group catch up to the Brandon so quickly. As those two fought so hard for the lead, it let everybody else get a good run on them. When you run smooth, you run clean, you run much faster. Well, here you can see, we're having a look at, uh, this is Nigel Marnie there, in the HMB car, down to the inside, he looks over, go, go have a look down your field a little bit as well, you can see that you've got some very close battling going on, Chad Simpson in P number 11, Daniel Roper in P, sorry, is that in P15, Daniel Roper in 14th, and Chris Oven there, in the peak Andrew Fries car, he runs himself in P13 right now, very close racing up and down the field, it's good to see not one, but more than one driver, from the NASCAR Peak Anthony Series, powered by iRacing.com, um, in this event. Cam's got someone slow there, just bringing their car, I believe, on towards pit road. Going very slow, that is Connor Cross there, in the number 19 machine. That it is, I'm trying to figure out what might have happened. You know what, he might have come off a two, uh, he came off a two, and he absolutely pancaked that rear end, the, uh, the side, uh, the whole right side of his car, into the outside wall there, uh, giving it uh, its own, Texas stripe instead of a Darlington stripe, but uh, that was uh, rear, uh, the rear suspension appears to have collapsed. That car is quite crab walking and is going to go to the pits, and I'll see what they can do. Yeah, there you can see that. Just getting a look at Connor Cross's car. Right hand side of that car is damaged. We do stay green, however. So it is still Brandon Trost, leading for Brandon Traino. Then we've got ourselves Tim Holgate, Ryan Norton, Jonathan Goat. They are your top five biggest movers and shakers in this race. Well, that's up on the left hand side of your screen. Tim Holgate, what a run he is having. He's challenging for the race lead to the outside in towards turn number one, Sean. Yeah, he has got a great run going. He has just been p picking up speed since we dropped the last green flag, and he's going to the outside, taking a look for the lead. Yeah, here we are running on board with him. The outside's not working perfectly for him. Brandon Trost is playing a little bit of defense, <coughs> and these two drivers back on the 16th Street Racing League Indy 500, it was one of the greatest battles we have seen in IndyCar over the last 50 laps, and Trost Looking for some retribution on that one because, of course, he was just a little bit light of fuel back in January. 
down. We've got Ray Afada going side by side right now with Nigel Marnie, your 2015 Indy 500 winner. Well, Ray Afada is going to win that battle. Miguel Angel Martinez is on pit road. That car looks to be also out of the race for the time being. That is a very long pit stop there for Nigel Marnie. So, Miguel Angel Martinez. 27 seconds plus that evidently looks as though it could be terminal side by side for the race lead again Holgate on the outside Trost on the inside as you've also got Alfala versus Goak right now Alfala's working himself through the field he's down to the inside of the driver of Jonathan Goak he should have that pass complete in towards turn number one cam now that he should, they are going to go too wide. It seems that the inside has been getting the better exit. Uh, Tim Holgate uh, hovering right on the, the gearbox of Brandon Trost. Absolutely nothing between them. I don't think he could stick a piece of duct tape between those two cars. But ultimately, Brandon Trost is covering his inside line. He's covering it very well. I think he understands that the inside line has a better runoff of the exits of turn uh, two and four, which uh, lets you go through that trial. There's a, a lap car that will all... Buzz by on the outside there, no problems there. But ultimately, though, uh, Brandon Trust is just covering his sectors. I don't believe Tim Holgate has it in his car right now, at least, to try and make it stick on the outside. As uh, Ryan Norton looks on, eagerly awaiting to see what could develop there, to see where he could pick up, as well as Jonathan Goak. Uh, having gotten uh, that position defended from Ray Alfala, and uh, is uh, trying to think about closing up on Brandon Trano. Yeah, we've got Michael Girl and Manuel Sanchez. They're battling rear end of your field. That's for P number 18 and 19, as it looks as though Sanchez moving up one place. We also saw PJ Sturgios. He's a longtime veteran of the IndyCar. He actually ran this car when it was as the World Championship car. It's the IOO5, but he ran the IndyCar back in 2010. He's also been a long-time runner of this car in both oval and road course racing. The 2011 IndyCar Premier Series, for example. Right, Norton's bringing himself back into this one, Sean, because of the fact that those top two have been side by side pretty much for the last five, ten laps or so. Norton, in that number 15 car, is the master of waiting for his moment and then striking. And I think that's what he's doing right now on that number 15 broken aero car. Just waiting for those two at the front to have their tyres go. Then, he'll pounce into action. Well, at this point, he really has no choice but to wait because these guys are running perfectly side by side. They both seem more than content to run side by side, and that doesn't leave a lot of room for him to go. So he's just going to have to sit back there and see how this plays out. And like you said, maybe save a little fuel, save a little tires, and make this a long run run for him. But he's in the perfect spot if he can just take care of his machine and let these guys work a little harder than him. Yep, having a look, there is where our father goes behind Blake Reynolds. Just catching up to this group now. Driver who started this race out front of the field has fallen back just a little bit now. He runs himself in P number nine on track in that number 23 machine. So he's fallen down a little bit, but still in sight of your race lead. As Tim Holgate has finally moved himself to the front of the field. But for how long? Truce back down to the inside, and it will be Holgate who will officially lead his first lap of the day, Cam. Yes, he is. Uh, when he started this race 42 laps ago, he was in position number 26. Now he is on point as uh, Trost actually washes out uh, coming off of the exit of two. And that will actually give a gap to Tim Holgate. Tim Holgate now without the pressure. Tim Holgate now without uh, the cars around him. He will have the free space to push as he can as uh, Tim Holgate is always a speedy car here is actually Brandon Trust immediately under attack from Ryan Norton getting gobbled up as well as Daniel Roper and Brandon Trano are too wide. Daniel Roper who is two laps down I have a feeling he was involved in one of those early incidents they might have replaced whatever they needed replaced and that car is uh, back to being quick he is the front of uh, the uh, lap down cars uh, but ultimately though Tim Holgate managing a uh, uh, Gargan, I think the biggest gap we've seen in the race, Will. Yeah, it's up to 0.8 of a second. This is what Holgate can do better than most. Norton on the outside, Trost on the inside. I'm wondering, Sean, just how worn out those tyres of Brandon Trost will be. Having to have run the um, low side, that entire run almost, as you had yourself, um, Tim Holgate, work on the outside. I'm wondering whether it's going to affect Norton's ability to actually be in the draft once he's flying away past that gap now between P1 and P2, 1.2 seconds. I think you're exactly right. I think when Holgate was going around, he had a car that was a little bit better on the high line than Norton does. 
and he was able to wear Trost down and kind of wear and heat those tires up as Trost had to hold the car down low. But it seems like Norton can get up in that same spot but can't quite put the pressure on for the time needed to get him uh, held down low to make the run stick on the outside. Well, we are getting ourselves towards what would be a natural pit stop window pretty soon. So we'd get to the point where we'd see drivers potentially coming in under green. Now that one would be very interesting because you lose yourself a lap but you always want to do it in such a way that Cam, you'd always give yourself most opportunities to bounce back if you need to. You don't want to be one of those drivers that has to put under caution and everyone else can't, you know, still be on the lead lap. So always a couple of interesting things to think about. Let's run ourselves along board with the ever popular Mr. Christopher Overland. Yes, uh, Mr. Overland is doing his uh, job as well as he's back in uh, 12th position as uh, he just seems to be riding in the back right now. He's actually up to uh, where Austin SPD was. Now, SPD, this is going to be an issue as SPD is now going to be uh, quickly coming into a rough situation. He Obviously, he didn't pit that last caution, so he's got uh, less laps on fuel, older tires. Um, he'll have to open uh, these green flag pit stops whenever that happens. And then, of course, uh, you would hate to see a caution come out and really... Uh, uh, put quite a few of these cars uh, down a lap as we already said this is only about a 24 25 second lap rotation around texas motor speedway so you will be going down a lap but ultimately though it's not even just where you're coming in it's where you're going out is of course you'd hate to be completely by yourself yeah as it stands pj sturgios chris over and this is something we normally see over in the last car p canty free series between two veterans of their own series john it's going to be interesting to see it seen him do it on an IndyCar track. Yeah, definitely going to be interesting. I'm just blown away by how much Tim Holgate has been able to pull away right now. Oh, looks like he's ducking for pit lane. Oh, uh, so is this going to be two? Yes, it is. Tim Holgate's going to come in at half race distance. The green flag pit stops then. Tim Holgate is going to come in. And, well, he has pitted on both these cautions. Maybe he's just trying to play around with the fuel strategy here. Just have a look at that pit time as the um, Fanatic Abutu car then will complete its service in a total time of 11.3 seconds. That's a pretty That's average true. stop there as he comes back out onto track. Let's have a look to see. Ice still hasn't come into pit road, but a couple of other people are now. There's Nigel Marneef heading himself on towards pit road cam. Yes, uh, so it is Nigel Marneef and Austin Espity like we we're presuming Nigel Marnif uh, bringing that uh, uh, number 12 IndyCar down here as Espity actually has a pretty bad entry. Uh, he'll actually have an issue trying to get that car out. I almost wonder. That is quartered well into the inside line there. He'll actually have to kick the tires out. Uh, it'll get it away nice and clean. So they'll get away nice and green. They will open up pit lane for us officially following Tim Holgate. And we'll have to see who else bites as uh, we do have a couple more cars coming down pit lane, Will. Yeah, and just as we were looking away, Ryan Norton becomes another leader in this event. He's got himself a four tenths of a second advantage over his teammate, Brandon Trace. Has fallen back now into the third position, so it's broken arrow number one, broken arrow number two, Brandon Trose runs in third, then Alfala in fourth, and Demerit running out your top five. Blake Reynolds on pit road, this is a very long stop for him, so he's either got an issue or he's fed on pit road. And Sean, it is interesting to note that this pit road is pretty tough to get onto, especially when these drivers pit out of turn number four. If you touch the grass or you're just a little bit slow coming down the gears, then it could be a travesty. Well, when you consider you're doing 220, 215, 220 miles around the corner and you got to make a move for pit lane, the other thing is you see a lot of these drivers right now to seem to be in kind of an indecision where they might make a last minute decision to come to pit lane and that's going to make it even harder as they try to get the brakes on and slow down for the very slow in relation to what they're running speeds of pit lane. Yeah, I have to say, I have, I've lost at least one race at this track. By a, board, a poor pit entry. Jonathan Goat comes out of pit road. Pit stop time him is eight seconds. As it'll be interesting to see if the two broken aero drivers will come in at the same time or whether they're going to split their strategy up. Brandon Cohen. Uh, so Braden Cohen is on pit road right now in the number 27 machine. So he's going to get his service complete. That'll be good for him for the end of the race there in the Grip TV number 27 machine. So, um, half the field have almost come in to make their second pit stops. A lot of these drivers are going long. Tim Holgate, to give you an update, they can see him. He is on the back straightaway right now. 
Um, heading himself down into turn three and four. There is Ryan Norton heading himself past the stripe. So that's about a lap and a third there, Sean, that you can see that the driver of what's his face, Tim Holgate, is behind Ryan Norton. So Holgate needs us to stay green for the time being. Absolutely, and that's the big gamble we're seeing here. You're seeing about half of the grid or half the front runners who've made that move for pit lane and really playing a strategy game when you had less than 50 laps there, maybe thinking they can make it to the end. Meanwhile, there's plenty of car uh, fuel and tire on the cars, and you're seeing guys like Norton, Trano, and Trost, Alfala even, who are doing just fine, but they are probably losing time each lap to the guys who did pit. Yeah, interesting to see that Brandon Trost, he's kind of stemmed his loss for the time being. It was, he's fallen back quite a lot from Tim Holgate. He's only about 0.8 of a second behind Brandon Trano right now, as there is a little bit of traffic that's going to come into play as well. No such thing as blue flags in the Verizon Indy Car Series. So these drivers are going to have to work for it. You have to work to get past drivers, as it'll be interesting to see what will happen as that one continues to develop. No money battling it out with Jonathan Goke, two drivers who have already pitted. And it does seem to be that at the start of the run, you can run two wide, in some cases, even three wide, Sean. You get into the runs, it's just like what we saw at the Texas Motor Speedway races in 12 when Justin Wilson won. You lose the ability to run free wide as these tires start to fall away. Absolutely, and if you try to, it just gets more and more dangerous. And right now, what you're seeing is a half a second difference between the leaders on worn tires versus Holgate, you know, now a lap down running in 14th, but running a half a second quicker per lap and with a much more stable car. Indeed, and it'll be very interesting to see if we get a late race caution cam if we get drivers on towards it. If there's 15 laps to go, I think half the field would roll the dice, the other half won't. Yeah, I'm not quite sure what is going to happen towards the end of the race, but I have to say, though, we have had cars that have come into pit, like uh, Blake Reynolds has come into pit. He has passed in the last three laps, Ryan Norton, our leader, Brandon Trano uh, in second, and Brandon Trost in third in the matter of two laps. So these tires, these cars, I don't think they realize it, but they are getting astonishingly slow. They have got to come in and uh, start uh, looking at getting in, uh, into the, pool, uh, into the uh, pit cycle here. As uh, Tim Holgate, our first car to have pit, is running a 124.2. Ryan Norton's running a 24.8. Uh, so there's already almost a half a second a lap difference per lap. These guys, I don't think they're realizing just how much their lap times are wearing off. Of course, uh, the longer they go into a stint, the better they're going to be at the end of the run. There'll be 35 laps to go the next time they pass the stride. We're getting ourselves into lap number 65 of 100 here in the Justin Wilson 150. That's 150 miles and running uh, close about 100 laps. As uh, it's, it's really spread out towards the front of your field. Austin SPT, Christopher Romero, they are pretty close on track, of course. Austin hey, SPT was the driver who, earlier on, had himself um, became Ooh. stay out. And Ryan Norton almost onto the grass there on pit road. Trainer will stay out. Ryan Norton brings his number 15 machine on towards pit road. Sean, that was close there for Ryan Norton. Almost caught the grass, which made have meant he would have immediately have looped his car. Yeah, that was very dangerous for two reasons. One, he almost didn't make uh, pit lane at all, and he almost got into the back of Daniel Roper, who was going on to pit lane ahead of him as well. Out of pit row, 9.5 seconds there for Ryan Norton. He's got Ryan um, Roper to deal with as he comes out of the pits as well. That is going to cost him a couple of attempts of a second, potentially, and that will drop Ryan Norton back just a little bit. Can't merge back onto the racetrack, has to wait, and you can see already that is Brandon Traino, um, who now leads this motor race out of corner before he comes in to complete another lap here today your lap leaders brought to you by and one design brandon trost has led 35 laps ryan norton 14 and um, tim holgate has led nine laps five laps led by brandon Trano, three laps by austin espatier and one lap has been led by jake c right there's been a total of two cautions here today so far at texas Motor speedway and it's good to see that one sean we've had six drivers lead at least one lap in this afternoon's event yeah and most of those have been in the result of on track passing so that's a real good thing to see a lot of good action here right now with the rotation of pit cycles we only have 11 cars on the lead lap but the leaders are the slowest cars on the track at this point they are Traino is staying out for at least 
one more. I think Brandon Trost is going to try and literally match whatever he does at this stage. Ray Alfala also is part of that Gagler class who has not yet come to pit road. Look how easy that was. That was Tim Holgate breezing around the outside of a multiple time NASCAR Peak Antifreeze Series winner. That is the power of fresh rubber compared to worn rubber there, Cam. Pit lane. Yeah, plenty of people on pit road. Yeah. We've got Traino on pit road. We've got Brandon Tro staying out, but Brandon Traino is on pit road cam. Yes, he is. I have a feeling Trost is going to be coming in next time by. And uh, if, they, if they're coming in, the rest of them might as well come in. As uh, Also, Philip Cross is on. Uh, pit lane is uh, Brandon Trano is going to be pulling that uh, number 16 into his pit stall there. These guys have been sliding a lot on pit entry. I've noticed a ton of these nose cones pointed towards the inside barrier. But luckily, nobody has uh, managed to beam one just yet. Uh, Trano will pull away uh, in the time that we have for the pits will. 9.8 seconds as they can take Maxim Carr back out onto the racetrack. Ryan and Trost has not yet come on towards pit road. Ray Alfaro 1.1 second behind them as they head themselves out of corner before. And Trost will Here come on towards pit road this time by. He's got a little bit of traffic on pit road, not too much sliding as he comes into his pit box once again. But Brown and Trost going two laps longer than Ray Alfaro leads this motor race, Sean. That is incredible. NASCAR champion Ray Alfala out front. I'm sure he's going to come to pit lane, seeing everybody else go to pit lane and actually seeing uh, uh, cars going by him as quickly as they are. Yeah. Um, in fact, Looks no, like I'm wrong. Out. Um, second place is also a NASCAR series driver. That is, of course, PJ Sturgios. Sturgios is going to come in this time by. So number two machine will come on towards pit road. Last time by, 25.0 there for PJ Sturgis, Tim Holgate also a 25 -er. I think what's happened now is you've kind of gotten to the point where the tyres are about as fast as each other. Here we can see Ray Alfala, now he will come on towards pit road. So number one machine heading himself down to pit road speed. Um, as you can see there, that is 55 miles an hour. Into the pit. 40, come 40, uh, 50. It's 55 here it's saying on here. But here we 50. are as they come into their pit boxes. Ray Alfala is going to get himself four fresh tyres. He will top up with some virtual race fuel. And he will be out and away in a time of 7.6 seconds. So Jonathan Goke now leads this motor race. And if I've got this one right, he's leading this race on merit. As he's on the same trusty as Holgate. Although Holgate is eating him up last time by two tenths of a second faster. As they come down into three and four cam. Yes, Nigel Marnif actually, though, uh, making it interesting. He's going to go onto the inside coming off of exit uh, number four. He'll have the inside line for the double, uh, almost the double apex of the tri-oval. I don't necessarily know what to call that just yet. I'll come up with a dumb term, don't worry. But uh, Nigel Marnif managing to get that position over Tim Holgate. Uh, yeah, they are just looking at that extraordinarily blue Pepsi uh, Jonathan Goke automobile there. But uh, ultimately, though, I have to say that they are closing. Even though they are starting to, uh, to tussle with each other and go back and forth, uh, these front three cars are closing, and we have to wonder where did uh, Trost and Trano come out in the pit cycle? So it looks, now that everyone's uh, got back, as Trano and Trost are actually fighting with each other, are uh, just about five seconds off the uh, rear end of Jonathan Go. Yeah, as we ride ourselves a little board there with Brandon Trano in the number eight car, they head themselves down into three and four once again. Lovely shot there from our Race TV 360 cam down exit of turn number four. There you can see Trace diving it down to the inside in towards turn number one. That was aggressive. Pass one, potentially pass two in one corner, Sean. That was quite a move there by Brandon Trost getting by, like you said, what's going to turn out to be two cars. It looks like, oh, no, he's got to drop back there. That was it's going to be really interesting. These guys are about five seconds back in the lead, which is significant, but they do have much fresher tires. So if oh, green, both of them turn around oh, there. Evans. That's Trost. That's Norton. Caution out. 21 laps to go. They both spin. They both carry on. How much damage is there? Trost and Norton have had their issues over the years. And well, we'll need to get ourselves a couple of looks back at this one because... It was, we, we thought something was potentially going to happen. It did actually happen. Let's have a look then. I want to start by starting this replay back as we had that three wide situation um, almost there. And this is Brandon Trace. This is the first lunge. As you can see, he's heading himself now on the exit of the trioval down in towards turn one. He storms himself there, cuts to the very inside to go past the driver of, 
out is Brandon Trado. Then he straps it out with Ryan Norton. Now, it's at the end of this lap that we're going to have the incident. As uh, so we get a look then from our aerial coverage, brought to you today by And One Design. They almost crashed there into turn three and four. Norton came down a little bit onto the driver of Brandon Trace. Now, I think he tried to do exactly the same thing as he did the lap before. Coming down in towards the turn. I'm going to um, have to say... That was Ryan Norton, um, who just came down a little bit there on Brandon Trost when he didn't need to. I want to get one more look there, Sean. But I think I am going to have to put that one onto Ryan Norton. Yeah, you know, Trost really closed up on him quickly. I'm not sure he knew he was there, but, you know, that's just a, a, a hard battle for the low line. Both of these guys know that is the line to keep, the line to protect. And I think Norton was doing everything he could to stay down on that line as as Trost really was trying to come underneath him a little bit. I mean, it's kind of hard to say who... It, it could go either way. I mean, both guys were fighting so hard for that low line. Well, I just saw another replay there. Trost had all four wheels on that inside line. He was coming up just a little bit. Ryan Norton coming down just a little bit. We might put that one down to a racing incident, but it was kind of close. And Ryan Norton did calm down a bit there on the triangle. Now, here's the interesting thing. Ray Alfala has stayed out by the looks of it. So he now will lead this motor race. Pit Road has been open. Um, Ryan Norton has come. Uh, he stayed out, no, actually. He, he stayed out. This is an interesting one. Chad Simpson is in third. Um, and then you've got Jonathan Goke in fourth, then Marnie, then Tim Holgate. 20 laps to go. Cam, before you go, this is going to be a crazy 20 laps. It is. Uh, we uh, had uh, our quick caution starts where we've gotten to see uh, everyone's gotten used to starting then we've had our long green flag run now our 20 lap sprint almost uh, is, uh, it'll be Alfella on the point with Jonathan Goke and Marnif uh, in the rest of the podium. We'll have to see what Ryan Norton wants to do as though the rest of the cars are coming in. Taylor Siffer, Dylan Jones, uh, Kevin O'Keefe, these guys are, the, of course, the lap down cars. But uh, ultimately, though, we'll have to see as that pace car is uh, getting ready to, to start where exactly they're going to want to go and where exactly they're going to want to be. Uh, Brandon Trost, he tried to get his nose under the inside there through the tri-oval. But uh, ultimately, it just didn't work. Uh, luckily, luckily, I don't think they damaged their, each other's cars. So this uh, that couldn't. Uh, we do have the opportunity to possibly see these guys racing each other again. But uh, ultimately, though, uh, it'll be 18 laps to go this time by, and it's going to be a very, very exciting finish. Yeah. So Alfala didn't pit. Norton didn't pit. Simpson didn't pit. The first driver off a of pit road was the number 10 Pepsi machine of Jonathan Goke. Nigel Marneef was then second, then Tim Holgate. Well, ladies and gentlemen, you've seen two great races on Racebot TV and iRacing Live today. There's going to be one more race. That'll be on Racebot TV a little bit later on this evening as we bring you coverage of the Skip Barber 2K World Cup Eliminator. Anyone who's a regular fan of the Skip Barber Sunday Night Skippies here on Racebot TV, we call it Sunday Night Skippies, will know how credible that one is. We're going to have it again a little bit on today, except there's a little twist. We eliminate the last driver in line at the end of every single lap. So join us for that one a little bit later on here on Racebot TV, the home of the world's biggest sim racing series, the RSN.com World Championship Grand Prix Series, the RSN.com Indianapolis 500, so many endurance races and so much more on Racebot TV and, of course, on iRacing Live. Lights are off on the pace car. Um, so... Sean, you ready for some racing? I'm sure ready for some racing. And, you know, Ray Alfala, he didn't go in, but he really only had about one or two uh, laps on those tires. So there was really no need for him to come in. And that puts him out front here for the restart, which uh, he's got some very fast cars behind him. But Ray Alfala, if anybody knows how to get it done, it's Ray Alfala. So we'll have to see how this plays out. Yeah, it is going to be interesting to see what will happen here in the last 17-ish laps of this event. So, here we are, ladies and gentlemen. Pace car, going to head itself out of corner number four. Alfala, Norton, Simpson. How damaged is Norton's car? We don't think it's that bad. We will find out pretty evidently, pretty quickly, if there is any issues. Brandon Trost is down in P number nine. We could see these two drivers at it again. Green flag back in the air. Great start there by Ray Alfala. Down they come, in towards 1-1 again. Alfala with a good early jump there over Ryan Norton. Simpson is 
in third, then Goat, then Marnie, then Holgate. Holgate already on the move as they head themselves down the back trailway. We ride our board then with the driver of Tim Holgate as he's going to get two drivers in pretty much the space of a corner and a half, Sean. Yeah, it's a pretty good gap, and you can see a battle right now. Simpson and Norton going at it. Simpson's being forced to run on that high line. As we've seen, the low line is paying off, and, well, Norton slid up a little bit. Might be letting that low line go. Yeah, down they come in towards turn number three. It will be the number 20 machine of Chad Simpson, who moves himself now up into the second place. Norton in third. Oh, and then we've got Norton versus Goke again. This is for P number three and four. As I say, these two drivers... They have been in many of our down to the inside. There is Jonathan Goat. He will complete that pass on Norton. Cam, I am going to think there might be just a little ding there to the arrow of Ryan Norton's cars. Christopher De Merritt, by the way, is out of the event. Uh, yes, he is. That is uh, very unfortunate. It looks like he's... Oh, trouble on racetrack! Big trouble there. And that one is... Well, I didn't see Ryan Norton. Goke. I think that is Jonathan Goat. Yeah, indeed. Jonathan Goat is out of the event that is also i believe chad simpson out as well let's get a replay of that our fourth caution of the day cam yes it is it just looks like uh, uh let's just see yeah it just looks like jonathan goke was on the outside chad simpson was on the inside and ultimately chad simpson was trying to take a, a more standard line into uh the uh tri -oval there but uh unfortunately that just didn't happen and uh so ultimately, though, at an uh, incident between Chad Simpson and Jonathan Goat, very unfortunate, but uh, worst off, it brings out the caution. I was going to say Christopher Demerit ended his race, but didn't pull out the caution that uh, yeah, Jonathan Goat and uh, Chad Simpson, this incident, pulls out the caution. It'll be, uh, it'll be maybe... Ten, eight laps left when we, by the time they clean this up. Yeah, there we are. A replay there of Jonathan Goke out of the race, as is Chad Simpson. Unfortunate. Here's the big question. Anyone going to come on pit road? Don't think so, Sean, because we've only got a couple of laps left of this event once we go green. Track position is going to be important to an extent. You need to be, in, in my opinion, in the top seven if you're going to make fresh tyres work. There's too many people on the lead lap right now, I think. Fresh rubber to be a big factor, unless half the field pretty much comes in. Yeah, I think if you think you're in contention for the win, there is no chance you're going to pit lane right now. Uh, that that caution was just, you know, you, you saw that coming based on how fast and how much these guys are starting to get racy with the end coming and uh, the end in sight. And I think we can expect more of that kind of action. And I'm not saying we're going to get another caution, but I sure wouldn't want to lose any positions right now. Well, here we are. There is a look at our AL coverage at this racetrack, Texas Motor Speedway, being a fixture of IndyCar racing for many years. Started with the IRL, and actually, it's an interesting little fact, Sean, that they originally were going to have a dual banking system here. So the normal 24 degrees of banking on the, the track, which we actually have, then they're going to have a smaller 8 degree bank, now like inside oval, which we're going to use for the IRL. Turns out they didn't need to that i did not know that about this place there we are <laughs> you learn something every day ladies and gentlemen of course um what was at the time car did attempt to run here in 2001 they had to abandon that race for safety reasons where i was going 245 miles an hour around this event around this racetrack and what they call graying out the disorientation etc which was in many ways the reason why car then had to file for bankruptcy then became known as Britain presents the Champ Car World Series, powered by Ford. Now, as far as um, the 2012 race, of course, this was the first what I call high bank race, Sean, that took place at Texas in the DW12. And everyone was worried about how, you know, were we going to get the intense pack racing? I think that race that Justin Wilson won that day showed that the DW12, in terms of high bank racing, was far superior to the old IR 03, 05, 09 car. Absolutely. This uh, this car has a lot of downforce to work with, and because of the amount of aero push, it does put a little restraint on the teams and the drivers. They have to put enough wing on the car, and that's going to slow it down, and it's going to make it a lot more drivable. And that has actually made it a very fun car to watch on a track like this. Let's have a look then. Biggest moves and shakers in this race. Alfala up 10 places. Holgate up 24. 
PJ Sturgeos up 15 places. They are your power movers in the field here today. Have a look further down. You see, you've got a couple of people who's also been able to work themselves closer towards the top 10. Right, Cam, who's going to win this race? Give me your name. Uh, you took my question. Uh, let's see, if we go to a straight pick em, uh, you know what, I'm going to go with Tim Holgate. Uh, it's either going to be Tim Holgate or somebody from the back. I don't think Brandon Trouster Chan is going to be able to do it. I'm going to go with Holgate. Sean? Mr. Sean Cole. Who do you think is going to win? He's looking through all his stats Everybody. right now. Yeah, Everybody. he's looking through all his stats to come up the most appropriate reason. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry. I, I got away from the mic there. I'm going to go ahead and go with Ray Alfal. He's out front. He is one caution away from this, this race victory being given to him. So anything goes wrong, I think as long as he can hold off Holgate through the restart process, it might be his win to keep. I'm going to go with the 2015 uh, Indy 500 champion. I'm going to go with Nigel Money. Um, so three different drivers inside the top 10. It's going to be fascinating to see what happens though. 10 laps to go here at TMS. Pace car in. Green flag back in the air and already we go to two wide racing. They can see Brandon Trost. Two wide up to three wide almost there in towards turn one. You've got the stake and shake car. Trouble on the racetrack already. Big, big, wicked crash there. Well, we didn't want or need that one and that was drivers asking for too much too quickly there, Cam. Um, actually, I'll take that back. Sean, I'll ask you that question. Too much, too quickly, too early. You know, I just felt it building up. A lot of these guys were starting to get a little pushy. You saw those battles for the low line. You saw guys doing a little bit of blocking count coming down the stretch the last 20, 30 laps. And on a restart with under 10 to go, you had to expect something like this. Yeah. And that that's one of the differences that we normally talk about. The difference between open real racing and stock car racing, NASCAR. You know, in the last 10 laps of a NASCAR race, people talk about the quote unquote chrome horn. You know, the ability to, in some cases gently, in some cases less so, to move people up the racetrack. You can't do that in an Indy car, Sean, because the fact that you've got wings. Um, you haven't got fenders, you've got wings, and you've got the, you know, you've got to be more careful. I think the driver said, it's just more of a stack up situation. It seems to me, you had Brandon Trost, Brandon Trainer, all jostling for position. I wasn't going to say anyone was deliberate or neglecting or so that, or actually trying to move anyone out of the way. But the situation is, in those circumstances, you've got to be just a little bit more careful. Absolutely. And like you said, it was just a little bit of a bottleneck. You had three guys going three wide fighting for basically one lane coming down the stretch. And, and that's going to be tough to deal with. And, and when you're in an open wheeled car like this, like you said, the flimsy wings, the open wheels, it just gives you no room for error. And then on top of it, comparing this to a NASCAR, there's very little chance of saving a car once it breaks loose in an Indy car. In a NASCAR, you got a little bit of room, a little bit of throttle pedal, and a little bit of counter steering to work with. But once these cars go, they're gone. And, and again, that's another reason you have so little room to work with when it comes to contact here. Yep. Well, we are going to get ourselves one more restart. Um, pit Road is open. I don't see any real takers for Pit Road. Um, involved in that incident, Chad Simpson, Ryan Norton, Austin Espiti, Dylan Jones. You've got Kevin O'Keefe scored four laps down right now. You've got yourselves out of the people who started. 14 drivers on the lead lap. Last one of those is Chris Overland. Then one lap down, you've got Ty Stiffen, Manuel Sanchez, James Crawford, Connor Cross. And then, of course, people currently involved in that incident. So we are going to get ourselves one more caution. The good thing in some way, Sean, it's a single file restart. Now, IndyCar did experiment with double file restarts on both road and oval races. They did determine that outside the three-wide start we use at Indy, just sometimes a little bit too packed to have double fire restarts. But here, watch for Eighth Alfara to potentially control the flow of the field coming back to the green flag. But a single fire restart isn't something he's used to. That's very true, but he is good at getting the jump and good at timing his making a move. So as long as he's controlling the field, he will set the pace. And like you said, it's a little different here in the Indy car, just being able to look in the mirrors and not see that guy on your side. And you also know that guy behind you is going to be able to get a good run. He's not going to have anyone fighting him right off the bat or getting cut off by the guy running on the outside of the front row. Well, there you can see the lights are still on on top of the Iris and car, the first safety car. We presume we'll go back to green flag racing at the conclusion of our next lap. That will be five laps to go. So, 
five laps. That works out to be under 10 miles worth of racing around this Texas Motor Speedway. You can just see that infield road course. It is actually a road course here at Texas Motor Speedway. There's three um, alterations that you can use to this racetrack overall, of course, including the Legends Oval on this track. So let's just keep an eye out then on the special gold iRacing.com first safety car. Let's see all those lights out. Oh, yes, they are. We're going to get one more going. And the next caution, if there is another caution, that will end this event. So bear that in mind. Because I think Tim Holgate will know that he has to get to the front fast, Sean. He cannot afford to allow a caution to come out and him just waiting for his time. He has to move now. That's exactly right. He has to act like this is the final lap. Every corner is the final corner because he might not get another chance. And if he makes a move, he better make it stick. I would I would imagine Ray Alfell is going to hold that low line, force Holgate to the outside, and just hope that anything can keep him in the front. Well, here we are then. The final run to the checkered flag here in the Justin Wilson 150 and iRacing.com special event to honor the memory and legacy of the late badass Justin Wilson. Out of corner number four will come the iRacing.com first safety car. Putting the field back in the command for the final time here today of the number one machine of Ray Alfala. Tim Holgate in second, Bertrand one eighth in third. Brandon Traino fourth, and then Blake Reynolds rounding out your top five. You can see that it was a little bit of a wait, and then he gets going. Green flag back out in the air. So, Alfala has got the early jump then. You can see the field is starting to stack up. Two wide down in your pack. So, come down in towards turn one and two. Keep it green. Keep it together, guys. The last couple of laps of this event. Off the back straight away. Down in towards turn number three and four. They come. A little bit of free wide racing. But out front, here comes Holgate. Here comes Ronnie Sean. And you can see him battling for that low line. Holgate has a ton of speed, but Ray Alfala is not going to slide up any. He's going to hold that low line, and that lets Marnif start taking a look to the outside in third place. Yep, down the back straight away they come. Three and a half laps to go. Holgate's going to look to the high side as they come down. They're going to go free wide in towards turn number three. Holgate in the middle there. He's going to be pinned down a little bit, and that's going to hurt his momentum. They are I'm going to have to figure out who wants to take on Alfala. Otherwise, none of them are going to win this event. And it's going to be Alfala on the inside. It'll be Holgate on the outside. We ride on board then with Tim Holgate. Three, two and a half laps left to go. Holgate can't quite make that one work. You alluded to it earlier on, Sean. We did have fresher tyres on that car for Real Farah. Holgate had a couple of laps longer. That could well be the difference maker. And you can see Alfala is holding that line and Marnif now looking low inside of Holgate. Yeah, here they come then. Uh, it's going to be Marnif. He's going to work himself to the inside of Holgate. He can't make it stick though as they come down the back straight away in towards turn number three and four they come. And ladies and gentlemen, the white flag will be out this time by one more lap to go. Trainer's caught up to this pack, but at this stage, anyone could win it. Alfala will hold the inside line once again. White flag out. Here we are. And it's going to be Alfala with the inside line and the lead as they work themselves out of turn number two. But this is where it's going to get a little bit jostly. They work themselves down in towards turn number three and four for the final time. Ray Alfala will win the Oh, Holgate's there going to be pushed out wide at the very last corner, but Ray Alfala will win the Justin Wilson 150 in commanding fashion. In the end, he led 24 laps here today. Ray Alfala, well, he wins in pretty exceptional style. There was contact with Tim Holgate at the end, but I don't think that was really anything contentious. We'll get ourselves another look at that one, Sean. Yeah, I think that was just a case of Holgate throwing caution at the wind and saying if I have any chance, I'm going to be making a push down low and there wasn't any room for him there. So great job by Ray Alfala. Did everything he had to do to get that win. He he held that low line and just demanded that anybody who wanted to win this race, they're going to have to go to the outside and go around him. Yeah, um, as Count just let me know, Holgate actually still finished in third place despite that one. So he held it together. <laughs> so good job there by Tim Holgate. And this is a, another replay of this off of corner number four. You can just see that little contact. Holgate just trying to look down to the inside. It didn't work out for him. Holgate, well, he still finished and he still held it together. So well done. We're going to look then, ladies and gentlemen, at your final race results.
Multiple time NASCAR Peak Antifreeze Series Champion Ray Alfala claims victory by a tenth and a half over Nigel Marnie here this afternoon. Tim Holgate will come home in the third place with Blake Reynolds in fourth, Brandon Traino in fifth, PJ Sturgis in sixth, John Goak in seventh, Kevin Palmer, Brandon Trost, and Brendan Cohen rounding out your top ten. Then we have a look a little bit further back. And you will see, we've got Jake Wright, Chris Overland, Philip Krause, Michael Dwell, Curtis Stifford, Connor Cross, Austin Espity, Chad Simpson, James Crawford, and Manuel Sanchez. Last look of your results coming up on your screen. I'm going to take a look back, and we're going to show you what happened after this event. You can kind of see it, but we'll show you it properly to show you here. This is Ray Alfano doing a backwards victory lap after he completed the race in honour of Justin Wilson. Um, pretty similar to the Polish victory lap, of course, which became famous in NASCAR back around 1993. So, um, well, Ray Alfala is your winner here today. And Sean, pretty impressive victory. It was a very impressive victory by the guy you're accustomed to seeing in a NASCAR and a NASCAR champion, but he is uh, certainly known around the IndyCar as well and just a very talented driver. And he, he did a great job. He had to be patient at the beginning of the race, starting in 11th. He had to work his way through the field. He had to work pit strategy and work it to his advantage, which he did a great job of. And coming down the stretch, whether he is the fastest car or not, he did everything it took to get the win and the job done. My hat's off to Ray Alfala. Great job and a great race. What a perfect race we saw here today indeed it was fun we had a total of four cautions here at texas motor speedway we have had a number of different leaders let's just run through it for you your lap leaders here today brought to you by and one design the official graphics partner of race spot tv brown and trost led the most laps at 37 ray alfala led 24 laps ryan norton 14 tim holgate 9 brandon Trano 7 5 for jonathan goak Three for Austin Espati and one for Jake C. Wright. If you counted that one up properly, that was eight drivers in total. Ladies and gentlemen, we are going to step aside for just one moment. We'll be back with post-race interviews after these messages. You are watching a special presentation of RaceBot TV on iRacing Live. This is an iRacing.com special event. It's the Justin Wilson 150, honoring the legacy and the life of Justin Wilson as Ray Alfala brings that car to the start finish line. We'll be right back. It's been a very long off season. Teams have changed, sponsors have changed, colors and all, but one thing that hasn't, they like to match the loud pedal. Green flag is out on the 2015 NASCAR Peak Antifree Series season. iRacing is, is the ideal platform for these broadcasts because we have the best racers, the best online racers in the world. And we have such a variety of racing from NASCAR to Grand Prix style racing, sports car endurance racing, we do it all. Since 2010, the iRacing.com World Championship Grand Prix Series has been the absolute pinnacle of road racing in a simulated form. Great start then by Yakoda from the front. They're packing up behind him one. They're going to be four wide as they come down into turn number one for the first time. Will they make it through that first corner? You can see them funneling through the center S's. It looks as though everyone is just about no. made it through. We have got ourselves some contact though, Rachel. Side by side going into turns three and four. Humpy's got the advantage, but Otten just not going to... Oh, he got into him! him. Sure gets into the 58, turns right into him, and that ends Ottinger's run. We do a lot of uh, live broadcasts now. Every Tuesday is uh, NASCAR night, so on alternating Tuesdays, we do the Peak Antifreeze Series, and on the other Tuesdays, the B-Class Series, which is the Xfinity cars, uh, and sometimes we'll even do some short track racing, depending on the schedule. Every other Saturday, we do the uh, iRacing World Championship Grand Prix Series, so the best road racers we have. And we also uh, broadcast some special events, including the Endurance Championship, which is part of the Road Warrior Series. So we broadcast the Daytona 24, the Sebring 12-hour, 
We'll do the Watkins Glen Six Hour, uh, several other races along there, and then of course the I Race and Pro Race of Champions, which is usually our biggest uh, and uh, most watched event of the year. That is short track racing, and that's how awesome this sim is, Joe. That's something you see on TV on highlight reels, and we just saw it here live. Uh, we invite high racers who are real world racers and they compete every December. The guys like Alex Gurney, Justin Wilson, Scott Speed, uh, Ron Caps, the list goes on. Uh, really some big name drivers from all major forms of motorsport. Uh, it's really neat to see them get together uh, and, and race together. See Rockland up top, down to the ball gets turned! Rockland gets turned! Caution is out! Out foul at the front of the field! The easiest place to find uh, the broadcast is uh, is on our website, iracing.com slash live. So you can find some of our races on fanschoice.tv as well. A uh, nice place to find iRacing broadcast. You can also find it at mrn.com and peakauto.com. Well, ladies and gentlemen, you just saw the world's biggest sim racing event live on iRacing Live. You have yourself, of course, an NASCAR Peak Antifree Series powered by iRacing.com. You also have yourself coverage of the iRacing.com World Championship Grand Prix Series. You also have coverage, of course, of the iRacing.com Road Warrior Series and the iRacing.com Indianapolis 500. So check out our coverage, of course, if you missed it early on today, of round number 14 of the RSA.com World Championship Grand Prix Series. Two rounds remaining of that championship. You can catch it on Racebot TV and on iRacing Live. Well, welcome back then, ladies and gentlemen, to this, an iRacing special event honoring Justin Wilson. Well, it's the number one machine of Ray Alfala who is able to bring his car to victory lane. And Ray, congratulations on winning what looked to be a pretty intensive event thanks well uh you know first of all of course uh thinking of justin wilson uh, that's the reason why we all ran this race uh you know it's it's unfortunate of course that we had to run this race in the first place but um regarding the race we got a setup from jonathan goke before you know a few minutes before the race so thanks a lot to jonathan and uh i had no idea what to expect i don't think i've i've ever actually run uh an indy car race uh at texas so my only experience was uh, Indy, and this was, uh, it just felt like a short track, you know, everything was happening so quick, and uh, I was, you know, people were telling me how my car was handling, and I was just like, I, I have no idea what's going on, guys, uh, I'm just trying to hang on out here and, and keep the keep the wings on it, and, and it worked out in the end. Well, how much could you have taken from your NASCAR Peak Antifree Series um, time running at this racetrack? I'm sure there's a little bit that you'll know. You know, for example, don't brush off wide off the corner number two. Be careful, hold that inside line when you're working yourself down the front stretch. How much of that was easy to translate and how much of it was literally just learning as you were going along? Most of it is uh, so different. Uh, I'd say just being in traffic is, is the biggest uh, parallel between the two, but everything happened so much quicker. And, uh, you know, it was, it was cool that the car actually changed in, in handling characteristics as the run, as the run went along. Uh, I couldn't exactly tell what the car was doing a lot of times. It would get loose off throttle and then uh, it would kind of plow <laughs> on throttle. And then if somebody would get right in front of you, it would just lose the nose completely. So you just have to think really quickly in these races. And uh, the, the reason we got up front at the end was because I, I basically stayed out as long as I could on the long green flag run, uh, you know, expecting a yellow. And the yellow came out just a few laps later and my tires were essentially fresh. So I just stayed out and... From then on, uh, Tim had me very worried because on on the last restart, he got right up on under my rear wing, and I figured he would he would get tight and push up the track, but he didn't. So uh, <laughs> I thought he was just going to pull a by on the high side, but we were able to just keep it keep it smooth on the bottom and and bring it home. Well, the inside line worked for you there in the last couple of restarts. Give you the opportunity to give a shout out to any of your partner sponsors, etc. Yeah, thanks to Slip Angle Motorsports, uh, Lisa, for all her support all the time. And, uh, of course, Last Row Motorsports, they were a few of us, uh, a few of them were in there in the race uh, uh, with us. And uh, the Wendell Scott Foundation, of course. Um, and, again, Jonathan Goak for the setup. That was uh, really, really, really fast. And uh, just happy happy to win this race and, uh, in unfortunate circumstances. 
Ray Alfala winning here today at Texas Motor Speedway, of course, a multiple time NASCAR Peak Antifreeze Series champion. Got plenty of other people to talk to. We will start by, first of all, um, having a chat with Tim Holgate. Tim, it was close. You were drifting through the grass in the final lap and you were still able to come home third. But of course, you're after the W here today. Yeah, that's that's absolutely right. But I mean, first and foremost, obviously, our, our hearts, hearts and thoughts are with the uh, with the Wilson family and his friends and everyone in IndyCar who's you know going through this tough time. Um, it was you know it, it it's awesome to be able to remember one of our heroes in uh, this fashion. So thanks to iRacing for putting this together. Thanks to RaceBot for uh, you know posting it up on the broadcast. Um, yeah, at the end there. Uh, <laughs> That's kind of a reckless way to uh, to finish a, a tribute race, but in, in the end, I was able to keep the car from collecting everyone else. Um, a bit more exciting. Uh, Ray ran a, a great race at the end there. There just there was no um, freedom for me to try and get a good run um, with Nigel and the other cars right behind us, so I couldn't back off and then try to get a good draft on him. And he was able to hold the low line without drifting up at all. Um, I tried pinching him a couple times, but. There just wasn't, uh, it looked like he had the rubbered in grip down there um, on the low line, and I was able to hold it, but there just wasn't enough oomph off the corner to, to try and make a, a good move. Plus, I'm watching my mirrors half the time, wondering what Nigel's going to do, whether we were going to go three wide or not. But that was that was an awesome way to end the race. I'm glad it made for, uh, for an awesome broadcast. Well, um, of course, we see you quite a lot in IndyCar Series competition, things like the 16th Street Racing League and also in the um, iRacing.com Indianapolis 500. So on one hand, of course, you talked about the, the difficult circumstances that all of us as IndyCar race fans and of course, IndyCar community itself have been dealing with, but I presume simultaneously, it is good to get back out there on the racetrack with some of the drivers who you've raced so hard with over the last couple of years. Yeah, it's been a, it's been a little while for me. I mean, it's good to be back on the, uh, the RaceBot TV podium. Um, haven't been racing too much the last couple of months, been a little bit busy. Uh, it was awesome to get back on track and, and be able to, to race with these guys. Had a great battle with, uh, with Trost, had a great battle with Ray, had a great battle with uh, Norton. And coming through the field, I mean, this is, this is some of the best racing that I've ever done in a sim. Um, you know, battling through the field, feeling the changing conditions of the car. Um, I, I, can, I can't imagine what it's going to be like, uh, you know, the next couple builds when we start to see actual changing of sun angles and things like that because we all came in here and it was a completely different condition than I think what most of us practiced in so we I pretty much just whipped up a setup a um, bunch of changes the last second there and it, it seemed to work out really well and the strategy played out because we short filled the entire way so it was it was a really good race well Tim Holgate comes home in third place before we let you go give a shout out to your partners and sponsors yeah, definitely I want to thank iRacing for putting this together. Um, we're obviously thinking about the Wilson family. Um, I want to thank Budu for uh, you know keeping us comfortable while we're racing. Jim Holgate, P3. Sean Cole is stood by with Brandon Traino. Hey, Brandon, you were in contention all day long, but you just seemed to catch a little bit of tough luck out there today. Uh, a lot of hard racing. Why don't you take us through the big moments of your race? Yeah, first and foremost, like everybody else said, uh, thoughts and prayers with the Wilson family, and thank you to iRacing for putting this amazing event on. Um, we weren't really happy with the outcome, although top five, I mean, you can't be too upset about that, but all race long, we were up front, fighting for the lead, fighting for the win, and uh, had a couple of um, untimely cautions to put us back in the field, and uh, maybe could have played the strategy a little bit better, but who knows? We uh, we had a good setup. All the guys at Broken Arrow put a really good car together, and uh, we couldn't be any more happy with the result. Now, you, you said it yourself, fighting, and it seemed to me most of the day you did spend your time fighting. How much was that a factor versus the guys who were able to kind of run single file most of the day? Yeah, when you're fighting with somebody side by side for laps at a time, you're just you're losing so much time to the people around you. Uh, people behind you can catch up so much quicker, so it's, it's critical to kind of be either by yourself or, or with teammates or people you know can work together to just run in a single file line and, and go to the front. But uh, fighting just, it's what killed us today. 
Well, you still did a good job finishing in fifth place, so I mean, uh, all that fighting didn't pay off. Uh, it worked out for you in the end, not where you wanted to finish, but still a good result. Yeah, I mean, fifth place, top five, uh, we couldn't be more happy with that and qualified outside poles, so there's a plus side too. Just all the all the thanks goes to the guys at Broken Arrow for the hard work they put into the setup, and uh, props to them. Now also with that fighting, you ended up running in that offline. The other drivers we've talked to, they talked a lot about the changing conditions and being offline. How much did that play a role today for you? Yeah, it was uh, it was interesting to try to adjust as the track changed. Um, watching the rubber come in on the track and then having to adjust the car, either in car or on pit stops with the wings. Um, it was definitely a challenge to try to stay ahead of the curve and it made the racing a lot more interesting to try to you know, not get as tight in the arrow push and maybe get a little loose if you were offline and not in the rubber. It was, it was definitely a challenge. Great. And and I also noticed you were one of the drivers who really held out on that pit stop during the green flag run. Uh, did you ever find yourself second guessing your strategy mid-race? No. I mean, we built the setup and we got lucky because we were able to go an entire field run without drop off like majority of other people were so we we're gonna try to push it as far as we can so we had the freshest tires but when we did that we got mired back in i think it was sixth or seventh when the caution came out and so we were not far enough into a fuel run where everybody else around us pitted so we were back on the same strategy as everybody else but i think if we didn't have that caution we probably would have contended for the win a lot better yeah, there's certainly some gambling in the way it all played out, and the caution certainly uh, played in that as well. Well, great job with your fifth place finish. Anyone back home or any sponsors you, you want to thank? Yeah, once again, all the guys at Broken Arrow, Ryan Norton, um, together, uh, Kristen Merritt, Harry, Borgen Hagen, uh, put in a lot of time, and it, it showed with the top five. It sucks that they didn't have as good of a finish, but uh, I'm glad we could bring it home at least top five. Yeah, again, well done. Back to you, Will. Cheers, thanks very much, Sean. I'm going to have a chat to a couple of other people whilst you have the opportunity before we go off air. Uh, first of all, talk to the guy who loves me more than anyone else in the world, Mr. Christopher Overland. Hello. I, I don't know where you heard that. How you doing? I'm not bad, I'm not bad. It's been a while since we spoke. Um, well, yeah, you're another one of these um, NASCAR peak antifreeze drivers heading over to uh, the IndyCar to honor Justin Wilson. Take us for your race. Well, well, first things first, I want to say, um, ju when I was about 15, 14 years old, and I found iRacing, it was a video of Justin Wilson, and uh, he was talking about, I think, the 16th Street iRacing League, and that's what opened me up to, to iRacing, and uh, my life has changed significantly from iRacing. I've got a career out of it. I've I've, I've run in the NASCAR Peak Free Series because of it. Uh, it's been a life-changing experience, so thanks to Justin for that, uh, honestly, um, Thoughts and prayers are with him, so that's why I decided to run this race this morning rather than sleeping in. But um, the the race was good. I, I don't know much about this Delara IndyCar. It's my first official ra race with it, so I was learning as I went along. And with the new dynamic track surfaces, the the track lost a lot of grip in that long run, and I was I was just hanging on. I was along for the ride. Once I got clean air, I started running times equal to the leaders, and uh, it really gave me some confidence for the run towards the end. And I got a little bit. Uh, a little bit too confident, got caught up in a wreck and had to take the reset, but we still ended up capitalizing with a uh, 12th place finish, and I'm definitely not upset about that. Talk about, and you make a very good point, and actually, as we close off our broadcast today, we're going to show you some footage of Justin at Indianapolis Motor Speedway um, in what was a community race that was going on down there, um, recorded by one of our very own I remember that. drivers, um, yeah, Tim Miller. So. I mean, that was back in 2011, and I, I can say this very similar thing. Um, I remember those commercials back from those days, like, so of Justin actually involved in that. But talk about the personal side of racing um, and the personal things that people come out of racing with. Um, in your case, of course, you know, the, and you and I go about way back, you know, we talk about things like the NASCAR Peak Anti Free Series. People sometimes are losing the fact that this is just a quote unquote game. But actually, for others, it's more of a chance. It's bigger than that. And the friendship that people build, and I can allude to this one myself, people build friendships, people build relationships. And I think when we look back, there's always a positive thing that can come out of that. Yeah, and I think that, that uh, puts a stamp on 
Justin's characteristics as a person. He supported anything and everything positive. So, um, I'm just glad to come out here and, and do this do this race and in honor of him and celebrate his life and what he's done as a racing driver. Uh, at the same time, doing what he and I and all the other iRacing members love to do is, you know, race toe to toe, head to head. And I gotta say, I cannot handle these Indy cars. I this, I'm, I'm staying out of these for a little while because they are hard. They're nothing like a NASCAR. Oh. Um, well, congratulations, well done on your 12th place finish here today. Uh, I'm gonna hand it back to Sean, and he has stood by with Chris Demerit. Hey there, Chris. Great job today in the race. It didn't necessarily go the way you wanted. Actually, uh, you were caught up in an incident towards the end of the race. Uh, what happened there? Uh, yeah, on the restart, uh, Chris and PJ got a run, and Austin and I passed us. Uh, perfectly legal, nothing wrong there. Um, and then on the back stretch, PJ and I got a run on the car ahead of us at the same time. I pulled out, PJ pulled out, quit my front wing. Uh, nothing against him, just that's the way it goes sometimes. Real unfortunate. So, what was the race like? I mean, you were in there for a good majority of the race. Uh, what was the racing like out there with the changing conditions and everything? The, uh, the first few laps were uh, a little hectic. I was dreading those every restart, but after that, uh, after the field spread out, I really liked it. Um, I found that I could run, the, I could pretty comfortably run the high line in three and four. And not many people did that, so I also got Queen Air up there, which helped me a lot. Uh, I don't know if you guys caught that on the broadcast, though. Um, and then turns one and two is a little harder because of the way the banking out of two works. But I just had a great time racing with that. And how is your setup working in the draft? So you mentioned you're running pretty well in Clean Air up high, but I mean you couldn't always pick your line out there. How about when you were in a crowd? Uh, throughout the crowd. Uh, on the fresh tires, it wasn't that much of a problem. Every, everyone was kind of packed up anyway. Um, as the run went on, you could uh, arc a little more into the corner and lift, and that could help. Um, basically, as long as you weren't right behind a car on really old tires, you were pretty much okay. And a lot of the other guys, they talked about the, the changes in the, in the car. Kind of seemed like the cars were getting pretty loose on the long runs. Uh, is that something you were fighting as well? Um, I wasn't fighting loose as much as I was fighting, fighting uh, understeer, especially out of turn two. Uh, but other than that, I put in a bunch of time in the practice sessions. Um, as you, as I was mentioned, there was a different kind of configuration than most of the practice sessions were. I think there was more, the track was rubbered in a lot more and the lighting was a little different and there was a lot of grip on the bottom. Um, but yeah, uh, looseness and tightness were both, both things you had to look out for if you weren't careful. Hey, great job. Well, any sponsors and people back home you might want to thank? I uh, got to thank everyone on Broken Arrow, uh, Traino, Norton, Gary, uh, everyone over there, and just thoughts and prayers out to Justin Wilson. Yeah, absolutely. We all, we all feel the same way there. Back to you, Will. Yes, thanks, Sean. Um, finally, we're going to get a word with Brandon Trost. Well, Brandon, half the race was good. Yeah, it was. Then what happened? Um, you know, I'm not going to say anything about what happened in the incidents. All I'm going to say about mainly is, uh, you know, there seemed to be something going on in the air. Um, I don't really know what was going on there, but... Uh, you know, just an unfortunate event off of pit road, um, really screwed me up. I think that's really what caused a lot of that stuff. I got off of pit road and someone made contact with my side. I, I don't know if I was too high on track or something or what, you know, I, I don't really know. I haven't watched it yet, but that's really what screwed me. And then I owed Michael Duwell, I think is his last name, an apology. Uh, I, I basically wrecked him and I feel terrible about it. Well... Of course, we've all been um, talking today about how we're honoring the legacy of Justin Wilson. Of course, you've been racing in IndyCar for quite a while. So, thanks very much for having a chat with us. Brandon Troster, we talked to both of the Brandons in this event. They both led at some point in this event, Sean. Neither of them won. Um, it was Ray Alfala. And I think that, from what we heard, um, it's very interesting to know that despite the fact that he didn't have the 
um, the experience in the car overall, it was actually more of the fact that he was able to translate very quickly. And that's what happens when you're multiple NASCAR P Cancer 3 Series champion. You can translate from one car to another very quickly. Absolutely. And I think what you heard from the driver's interviews is that today's race, just like we talked in the pre-show, the changing conditions were going to be a factor. And you heard each driver really talk about how it did affect them. And that might have even the playing field a little bit for guys like Ray Alfalo, who are so good at, at understanding the car. And even though he, he was talking like he didn't really know what the car was doing, but he has such a great handle on it and he knows what to do with the car. And I think that with those changing conditions, he was able to adapt just like everybody else and really uh, it, it worked to his advantage, obviously. Well, thank you very much, Sean. Um, first time that you've been on Race Spot. Yeah, absolutely. Had a great time today. Great uh, great broadcast you guys do. Big fan of what you guys have done, so it was a real pleasure to be here. And uh, it was a pleasure to be part of this this broadcast. And you heard a lot. You know, I didn't really talk a lot here about Justin Wilson here today, but you heard a lot from other people. And, you know, he, he meant a lot to the racing community and to a lot of people who had a chance to meet him. A lot of people who, as you've heard, that he, he played a role in their destinies even. So... Uh, it was a pleasure to be a part of this great event and a great camaraderie of the iRacers and uh, the kind of thing that iRacers and sim racers are known for, really uh, paying their respects and being there for fellow racers. Um, before we let you go, um, quick chance to give us a heads up about not only the, the Simpit show, but also the Simpit IndyCar series, which of course takes place every week. Yeah, we actually just wrapped up our season, uh, t a 13-week season, uh, well, 12-week season, and just finished things up. Not sure what we're doing next season because they've kind of made some changes for the IndyCar. So it looks like the IndyCar is going to a 26-week season. Not sure what we're going to do moving forward, but the Sim Pit's going great. A uh, lot of really cool shows. You know, we've got some cool reviews coming up. A lot of technical stuff, a lot of DIY, and, and most importantly, the kind of pieces that hopefully are going to inspire people to race or inspire them to work on their racing and be a better racer. That's certainly what the Sim Pit is all about. Well, thank you very much to Sean Cole from the Sim Pit. Thank you very much also to Rachel Whiteford, to Sam Compton, and to Hugo Louise for the other stream that you've seen here today. And ladies and gentlemen, we'll say it again before we go. If you have got a couple of quid change, if you've enjoyed this broadcast, or the other broadcast that you've seen here today, please go to justinwilson.co.uk and feel free to donate a couple of pounds. That's justinwilson.co.uk forward slash donate to help Justin Wilson's family through this horrific, horrible time. Um, and again, our thoughts and prayers are from everyone here at Racebot TV and on iRacing. Um, go out to the family of Justin Wilson. Um, some kids will never get to see their dad um you know when they graduate when they get married and a wife has lost her husband they are the important messages that needs to come out nothing else we can discuss everything else another time but right now we need to remember the family because they are the most important um so that concludes our broadcast ladies and gentlemen this has been a racebot tv um special event here on i racing live and before we go we're gonna show you some fan footage which has come from an iRacer, Tim Miller, and we're going to use this to wrap up our broadcast. So thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, once again, for being a part of this iRacing special event honoring Justin Wilson. Good night.